Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in the next couple of videos here, we're going to talk about blogging inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. So let's come over here and click on our sites and our funnels. And again, blogging in here is really no different than it is in WordPress or uh, what was that old Google blogging platform? I don't even know if it's around anymore. It's Blogger, I think is what it was. And there were others, and they've all kind of disappeared over the years. Uh, Medium, I guess, is another blogging platform as well. But they're all pretty much the same. You're going to put up what is known as, and where the word blog comes from, is actually a combination of the two words, which was web log. That got shortened into the word blog. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to show how to set it up in here. And the first thing we're going to do, because we already looked at the pages, the templates, the themes in um, the, when we were talking about the workspace and about the site or hub, whatever you want to call it, I figured let's come in here first and let's just take a look at the blog template pages. So here is our home blog template page. So I'm just going to open up each of these and you're going to see that these templates are all pretty basic. So that first one was the home home page. This one here is a search template page. Then the next one here is the actual post page. Again, very, very basic kind of templates in here. And then we have our blog category page. Now, in the case of these pages here, the category page, you might use the search page. I don't really see you using that one. Probably, maybe not ever. Uh, you may not ever use that one. You might, who knows, um, especially if you get a much larger blog. Here's the home page. Of course, you will probably use that one, even though you don't need to. Because realistically, you could put a collection of blog posts or a collection of categories onto any page you want. And so you don't really need to use a home page either. So maybe all that you're going to use out of the four pages we were just looking at right there, um, the post page may be the only one you ever use. Because as I said, you could put a collection into any one of these other pages. So let's just go over here. Here was the workspace I showed you the other day that I built out as the assignment for the Funnel Builder Certification Program. And so let's go in here and we can customize this. Now I don't have a particular page in here known as a blog page to go to, but I do have a content hub page. And so I can click on the content hub and let's just say in here, let's add in a row and uh, then we can go to blog and what I can do is I can come down here and I can say okay on this content hub page I want to put in a collection of categories so it'll list out all the categories I have inside of my blog somebody go in there click on a category boom go and see all of the uh, all of the blog posts that are inside of that category and then probably even more useful would be a collection of your most recent blog posts that you could put onto the page and I'll put it in here real quick but then I will show you um, in another video how we're going to set this up because how you set this up is exactly the same as you would set up uh, pages or a collection for courses or lessons inside of the course section of the training as well. So basically blogs and courses are very, very similar in that they have these collections that you can put in there. So we're not going to, we're not going to play around with this anymore because I'll show you how that collection works in a minute, but we're going to come back into our pages here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we are going to click on blog. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up here and it's going to show all of our blog posts, the ones we have in draft and the ones that we have public. And then it gives you out of the box, it gives you two pre-filled in blog post examples for you. You, of course, can either modify them or delete them. But let's just take a look at one. We'll open this up. And again, very basic because there's really no content in this post. But you have your header, you have a footer, you have what would be a an image or a video here. This is probably supposed to be the uh, image, the featured image for this post. You got your breadcrumbs above it. And then you have the title of the post and the date it was published. And then they have a sidebar over here where you'd put a picture of yourself, your name, and a little bit of information about yourself. So like I said, the templates in here are very, very basic. And of course, you can modify them to look like anything you want by customizing them in the editor. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our blog settings. 
So let's click on that button and we can call this here anything we want. It says primary blog. Let's just change this to our success path blog. So success path blog and let's just change our, our path here success-path-blog. And again, if we want to, we can pick a style guide for this, uh, for, for our blog. And then we can go in here and we can grab a hold of a template page. And as of right now, nothing is populating in here. I think that is a glitch inside of ClickFunnels right now. So we'll just leave that alone. And then again, here we can set a default SEO metadata for every single post that we have. So we can put in our post title and our post description. And as always, I don't think I mentioned this in some of the earlier videos, what you put here is also what's going to show up here in the tab. So your blog title, your meta title for your, uh, for any page, or in this case here for all the blog pages, your meta title is what is going to show up here. And so you can only really see the first couple of words. So make sure that those first couple of words are the most important words in the meta title for any page that you set up throughout all of ClickFunnels. And then of course here we got a default sharing image. Again, this would be an image for all of your blog posts. So we can just put in any old image in there. But then down here we get to where we can put in categories. So let's just say we're going to create a new category and we're just going to call this one here Ninja Hacks is our category. And we're going to create our category and now we see it right there. And now of course we can attach that category to any one of our blog posts. Again, think WordPress because they really kind of emulated this after WordPress. These would be known as taxonomies inside of WordPress. And then we can also do a tag as well. So let's just say we're going to do hacks as our tag. So we got our Ninja hacks category, we got our hacks tag, and then down here we can add in a new author. And I will put in my own name here as the author. And then I can put in an image of myself as well, but I don't really have one. So let's just put in uh, one of my ninja images, and then we will create the author. And then you see it down here as well, along with my email address, which I will blank out. And now we will update that blog. So now we got in there our categories, our tags, our authors, and also our metadata that will go across the entirety of our blog. And so we can back out of here. And let's see what else we want to look at here. Well, we can view our blog real quickly, show us what our blog homepage looks like. And then we can also click on customize or we can create a new blog post. But before we click on this customize, let's go over here first to click on our customer center and then we'll click on customize here and they'll bring us into this page that we've seen many, many times before. And I just wanted to show you over here, you got your blog homepage right here and then you got your blog post page and your blog category page. And then they have one here grayed out for categories collection. So just like down here in the courses where we had our customer center, our course home modules and lessons, as you'll see coming up in later training, um, the blog home will work exactly the same. It works exactly the same as the home page. So these are the templates that we can come in, edit these templates, and then that template will be used across everything. So now you're only going to have one blog homepage, but you might have multiple blog post pages. Of course, you will have multiple blog post pages and then blog category page. Probably not so much. That'll probably just be one as well because you're going to have just a listing essentially of all of the blog categories in there. But let's just take a look at one of these real quick. So here's our blog homepage and we got our collection of our posts below it. So what I want to do is show you how to put in one of these collections is really quite simple. We're going to add a row. We're going to say one column row 
and we're going to go here. We're going to click on blog, and then we're going to scroll down a little bit. We could put in blog categories if we want, but we may want to save that for our blog category page, or we could maybe put this into a sidebar, or we could just put it right here on the page as well, but we're going to put it in as they have it here. So we have a uh, cl collection, not a categories. We have a blog post collection is what this would be. And we're going to say we want this to be one column. And then inside of here, we're going to put in an image. And then we're going to put in the title. And then we're going to put in the link below it. And if we click out of here, then we'll see, okay, this is the same as what they have down here at the bottom. Now they just made the, po the, um, the font size a little bit smaller here and slid that over to the left-hand side. The same thing with this link. They just changed the CSS on there a little bit. But let's come into this collection then as well. So that's a little hard to get in there sometimes. And we will click on this. And so you can come down here and you say, how many across do we want? So normally you're going to have two or three across, but you could have as, as many as just one across or as little as just one across. And then you can say, okay, well, how many items do you want per page? Let's say we only want six per page, but let's say if you have six per page, but you've only created four blog posts, it will show only, of course, the four blog posts. It won't show the other templates here. But also if you hide the pagination, if you have four blog posts, the pagination will actually hide. But if you tell it to hide the pagination and you have 12 blog posts, the pagination will still show anyway, because it's telling people that, hey, you got six here, click the button and find another six on the next page after it. So you can change the coloration and everything on there. And then again, you can come in and, and what happens is, so you got your outer row here. So you could do something fancy around your outer row. Like let's just say, let's just put in a quick shadow around the outer row. That kind of looks really bad. Let's make it a little something more like that. And then you can come in and inside of each of these here, you have a row as well. Actually, let me see. Can you, I don't think you can do any CSS on the, the post container itself. No, you can't. But we can come inside here and it creates automatically this row inside of here. So we can come in and we can say we want a shadow on there as well. Like you see they have down here at the bottom where they have a shadow around each of these. So again, you can have all the styling that you would have on just about every other element inside of ClickFunnels. You could have it on each of these and we can come in and we can adjust all the styling on the images. We can adjust the styling on our text. So let's just say we want to turn that off and let's change the font size here. Let's bring this down. We only want it to be like a 24 uh, pixel font and we want it to float to the left hand side and you get the idea here any any css you want to apply to it any styling you want to apply to it you can on each and every one of these collection elements and as i said you could probably come over here as well and we can come into this row let's say we want to add another element we can come to our blog and let's say we want to put our category elements in over here and we'll make it one column and then we're going to put in the category name and a category link below it. And now let's come into this element. And again, hopefully, okay, there we go. So like I said, it's real tough to get in there. In this case here, we're going to say let's only do one across because we don't need... You know, three across is going to really kind of look crazy like that. And in this point here, let's leave in all of them that we have. But then we're going to come into each one of these because that font size is obviously way too big. And we're going to change this. We're going to bring this down. Let's say we want this down to like an 18 pixels right there. And then this one here, we can change this. And let's say, you know, it says here, go to course. Did I put in, oops, I think I put in the wrong element here. I think I put in a course element. So let's take that back out. Let's start all over again. And we're going to go to blog. There we go. Now we are in blog, blog category. I think I had course category or something. Uh, so that wouldn't be right. So we got our name and our link. Let's try this. We'll start all over again. We'll bring this back down to one. We will leave in 16. So yeah, see, it's still saying go to course. So that must just be 
a glitch in the system um, that they just put in the wrong wor word there because it shouldn't obviously be a course, that should be a category. And we will bring this down back down to 18 again. And then, yeah, it does say category name after it. So we'll take this out. So it just says category name. You can put any text in there. Uh, just make sure you leave the uh, two curly braces with the category dot name in between. And then it will populate it. And then here, let's go. We want this to be a little bit smaller. So let's say 16. And maybe in both of these cases here, let's float these over to the left. So we'll go in there, we'll float that to the left. And maybe it's a little too much room between the two of them. So let's take out that top padding. And so now we have it there. Now, of course, we have to, you know, re preview it and, and get some categories in here and do all that and see what it looks like um, to style it and make it make it look good. Because maybe what you want to do is maybe you want to put them each side by side too. That might be something you want to do, which you can do. And anytime you make the change in any one of these uh, elements within the collection, it changes everything. So let's say here we want to add a row. And then we say we want a two column row. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to drag these items down here. And we go like this, put them side by side. I don't know, is that going to look good? Because you got your category name and then you got your category link. Well, I don't know. Is this actually a hyperlink here as well? That's something we'd have to test. May not be that this is actually a hyperlink right there. But maybe what you want to do is just take this out. If this is a hyperlink and if this looks okay, then why not just have just the singular category name here? And especially if it says, like I just saw, Ninja Hacks, then that might be just fine because we know, because we'll put a little header above this here and we're going to know, okay, here are all of our categories. So here's our category on um, whatever whatever it is you're doing. Here's your category on shovels. Here's your category on rakes. Here's your category on cement bags, you know, whatever it is. As you go down your list, if you think of like an old school regular blog where you might be selling hardware items or something. So that's it for the categories there. And I think that is going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to take a little bit more of a look at the blog posts themselves. But here again, we went over how to set up the blog itself, how to set up our blog homepage, and realistically how to set up collections. So if you have any questions, just let me know.